Hi everybody, this is the Lost Boy with another repair video, Sega Game Gear Edition, and thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video or find it helpful, feel free to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell if you'd like to see new videos when they come out. This week, I'll be trying to breathe some new life into this dying Game Gear. As you can see, it does turn on, and that's about all I'll say. While it powers on and an image does come on the screen, you can see it's really far from usable. You can turn the contrast up and down. It really doesn't make a difference. You can sort of play, but it's, it's not really in usable condition at this point. These are basically all the tools needed for the job. We need a 4.5 millimeter game bit screwdriver. Also need a small Phillips head screwdriver. Also need some rosin core solder, as well as some flux. Here I also have a paintbrush to add the flux some tweezers, needle nose pliers, and a soldering iron. So first thing, you want to locate all six of your screws. Two of them are beneath the battery doors. The other four are at the top right and left corner and in the bottom, sort of inside of the battery doors. So first thing at the top, that is the screw that requires the game bit. All the smaller holes have regular Phillips screws. And they're right here. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six, as well as the one in the middle, which requires the special game bit driver. So go ahead and quickly remove those. Carefully open from the bottom. Got some cabling attached at the top. You want to be careful here. So just carefully remove the wiring harness from the socket. Just sort of grab it and wiggle it as best you can. It's a little awkward, but if you're careful, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So there's one on the left, and there's actually one on the right, and one more small one also on the right. Here at the bottom is where you see the designation of which motherboard you're working on. In this case, I have a VA5. Also, in some cases, the number past where it says VA5 is also important. Just keep that in mind. This is what you need to know when you're looking for the replacement capacitor kit. And here I have my capacitor kit, which I picked up from console5.com. And in with the kit comes this little piece of paper, which has some handy information, just letting you know that although the capacitors that are in the kit don't exactly match the ones in your unit, it's okay, because you can go higher in one direction. I believe it's the voltage. So the top one is, the original is, is a one microfare, 10 volt. And the substitute is one microfare, 50 volt. So apparently it's okay to go in that direction. So this list is just to let you know the values of the capacitors that you'll be replacing the original capacitors with. And here you have just a big bag of like 23 capacitors. Here we have a little note explaining why the capacitor values are different in some cases or in most cases. And here I have built a chart of my capacitors because this is kind of where you can mess up. There's a lot of spots for capacitors to go. There's a lot of little caps to go in there. So I find it's best to map out what's going where first. So you look at all your values, write everything down with the capacitor numbers. And at that point, there's really no room for mistakes. So first off here, I'm working on the power board. I'm just removing some capacitors. It's a little hard to see here, sorry but basically just applying heat to one lead, pull it out a little bit, go to the next lead. And 
and keep going back and forth until it comes out. And if you've got some solder still in your holes, you can use a solder pump to just quickly get rid of that. Had a partial success there, try again. And there, as you can see, there's the clean hole now. And there's another one. I found to get my capacitors close to the board, I needed to kind of alter them a little bit, like I'm doing here. That's really up to you if you want to do that. Always make sure you're doing your polarity correctly. The white stripe to the white side on the board. That's the negative side, by the way. You can bend the leads outward to hold it in place. Apply a little bit of flux. Soldering job should be fairly easy. I just make it look hard. And you can go ahead and cut your leads off. Try to cut them around the same length as the ones that are on the board. You can eye it out. And you go ahead and repeat that process for the rest of those capacitors. Now we'll just do an example on the audio board. These are the worst capacitors in this job. They're surface mount capacitors and I have trouble with them myself. If it's your first time doing surface mount capacitors, you may want to look at another video just to, just to brush up on a technique for these because they're a little bit tough. It's essentially the same process. You just have to go back and forth from one terminal to the other and just gently, gently lift a bit at a time on each side. You just have to be very, very gentle. And there's that one off. In the case of surface mount, it really kind of helps to pre-tin the pads so that when you put the capacitor in place, you can just heat the little lead and it, it should just attach fairly easily. Then just give it a gentle wiggle to make sure both leads are firmly seated in the solder. And then you can go ahead and repeat that process for the rest of those surface mount capacitors on the audio board. At that point, you finish your power board and your audio board and you're on to the big job. The capacitors on the main board are kind of glued down. In some cases, it might be mostly dried out, but in some cases, they might kind of be on there pretty hard still. They kind of snap off in some cases. So just sort of gently pry them up with the tweezers. And then same thing, gently back and forth from one side to the other.
then always keeping polarity in mind, try to recreate as best you can the orientation with the new capacitor that closely matches the one you took off. Always carefully test just to see it's properly attached. And again, carefully back and forth to remove. Here I'm just pre-tinning the solder pads. and again, pre-bending the wires to replicate what was removed. go ahead and repeat that for all the rest of the capacitors on the main board and then once that's all finished you're done time to reassemble first on the left is the audio board going in then on the right hand side the power board and we'll screw those down each has two screws Put that little metal shield in place and screw it down. But first, make it pretty. Now the two screws in the power board. The metal shield is attached with four screws. Now it's time to carefully reconnect the wiring harnesses to the sockets. And it looks like a Game Gear again. Just put in a couple of screws really quick to test.
I'm always a little trepidatious at this point. Kind of wondering what's about to happen. Kind of seems a little bit uh, like uh, it's not going to work. Turns out I just needed to adjust the contrast a little. At that point, it's best to go ahead and put back in the rest of the screws. All you're left with is getting into a little bit of Sonic. As you can see, the screen isn't perfect. This is an original Game Gear screen. Those screens were never the best, and they're, they haven't gotten any better over the last 25 or whatever years. The screen technically works now, but I'm still thinking about perhaps doing a McWill mod in the future because the McWill screens look amazing. Also, I'm pretty sure in the future I'm gonna do a little bit more on this Game Gear, including replacing the screen gem, as well as restoring a battery bank, as well as a few other neat little things. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that repair video. I'll be back with more vids before too long. In the meantime, always remember your happy thought, and I'll see you next time.